Hey everybody, so about a year ago I got this movie pass card. This card lets you see one movie a day at the theater. And in the past year I've seen over probably 120 movies at the theater. And earlier this year I reviewed a movie called Brad Status. I really liked it. And tonight I'm going to review three more movies I really liked. Uh, first up is Eighth Grade. I saw that today, and it's just a really good movie. And then American Animals. I saw that a couple weeks ago, and it's just been sticking in my mind, and I want to review it because I really liked it. And the movie Tully I saw a couple months ago. And I kind of like reviewing, you know, movies I really enjoyed instead of just being really negative. You know, the movies I enjoyed, I have more to say about. So tonight I'm just going to talk about all three of those. Movie Pass is probably going to shut down pretty soon. About nine months ago, if you spent $8,000 on one share of their stock, it would be worth about 10 cents today. Their, their stock is at 10 cents. This service is probably going to shut down pretty soon. They're uh, losing a lot of money, and MoviePass has been great for the past year, but I don't think they're going to last that much longer. So, the first movie I'm going to talk about is 8th Grade. It was directed by Bo Burnham. He's a you know, comedian who started out on YouTube. And this movie is about a girl in eighth grade, um, Kayla, who makes YouTube videos. And Bo was like the perfect person to direct this movie because he started off on YouTube and he knows a lot about it. And it's just um, really realistic because um, I'm saying um, right now, that's kind of like Kayla's videos in the movie. She, it, it goes on long shots of her going, um, uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, kind of like I, I was just doing earlier. Um, so the actress who played Kayla really nailed the performance. Kayla is just a really nervous girl in eighth grade, and she's like socially awkward. And um, she's nervous in her YouTube videos, and she's nervous in real life. And she, like in her YouTube videos, she talks about topics that relate to her real life. Like, she has no confidence, so she makes YouTube videos on her little vlog talking about ways to have confidence. And, like, it cuts back and forth of the problems she has in her life, and then it cuts to her YouTube videos. And I guess I just really related to this movie a lot because I'm talking to a camera in my bedroom like right now, like she does in the movie. And, you know, I've been making random internet videos since I was in sixth grade, actually. <laughs> So I really related to her character in this movie. Her YouTube videos, she says a lot of cliche stuff that you see on the internet all the time. It's, it's obvious that Bo Burnham spends a lot of time on YouTube because it's all like cliched things that you hear all the time from YouTubers, especially in that age group. And it's like, you know, don't listen to the haters and just all bunch of cliched stuff that you hear over and over again. And she'll say like, don't be fake, just be yourself. But then if you look behind her, she has like a fake background and fake lighting and she's being fake. And like she says, oh, just have a bunch of confidence. And then it cuts through her in real life at school and she has no confidence. And it's just like she's like bipolar. She has two different characters, basically her YouTube character and then her real life character. And it's just really realistic. And um, the scenes in the school, there's a lot of nostalgia, like there's a, a kid just stacking markers on top of each other and just ro like lots of shots of um, realistic things that kids actually do in school just to pass the time because especially when you're in eighth grade school can be so mundane you just think of like you know random stuff to do and um, there's a lot of like just nostalgia just from watching the movie that brought back of uh, you know things I would actually do like stacking markers on top of each other and seeing how, st how high you can stack them. And I like how the characters are pretty realistic throughout the movie. You know, in some movies, they portray bullies as people who just go around punching people all the time, you know, <laughs> beating people up left and right. But that's, that's not really how bullies are, or at least in the school I went to, there was no, like, bullies just beating people up. The real bullies in school are people who just say, you know, slightly mean stuff to, to one another, and um, that's how it was portrayed in this movie. It's just you know, a small group of girls who just say mean stuff or, or not even saying mean stuff, but just avoiding Kayla. That's like, that's like the real bullying that goes on in real life. Um, at least from my experience. Um, so it kind of just brought back some nostalgia and made me feel like I was in eighth grade again. And they had like realistic interactions between Kayla and her dad. For example, they had a meal together, a dinner together, 
and Kayla has headphones in and she's watching something on her phone and her dad just goes hey Kayla how was your day and Kayla's like dad what's your problem I'm listening to stuff on my phone puts the headphones back in and um, she's kind of mean to her dad but that's kind of how everybody is at that age you know we kind of just get upset at our parents for every little thing or just for paying too much attention to us or not paying enough attention to us just over stupid small stuff so it cuts from a scene where she's looking at her phone and ignoring her dad to a scene of her at school where other girls are just looking at their phone and ignoring Kayla so she kind of gets um you know payback for what she did to her dad and again I think a big part of the reason I like that movie is because of her making the YouTube videos like in her bedroom she had notes all over the wall about things to say in her YouTube videos Right now, I'm looking at notes on my computer screen of stuff to say in this video. And I, I guess that's why I kind of relate to her so much in the, the movie. And she just does a great job of portraying being socially awkward and just being nervous around people. And, you know, it's well expressed because she brings this stuff up in her YouTube videos. And the next movie is American Animals. I had really low expectations going into American Animals. Um, this was produced or, or purchased or something by MoviePass. It was a MoviePass venture. And the trailer looked just like an average movie. It just didn't look that special. And this movie didn't make that much money at all. It might have even lost money, I'm not sure. But it was a great movie, though. The first movie was in eighth grade. This movie is in, like, college. So it's moving forward. And then Tully is later on in life, like, in your early 30s I guess so the three movies are kind of over a lifespan of somebody's life and so American Animals is like a movie about peer pressure and so there are a lot of movies where guys in college or that age do stupid stuff to impress girls but there's not that many movies where guys do really stupid stuff just to impress their friends like it's about peer pressure it's about trying to fit in with your friends. American Animals, I'm gonna just spoil the whole movie right now, so if you wanna see it, don't watch this review, but American Animals is about a group of guys in college who do a heist, not a bank heist, but they do a heist of a library. A library in their college has really expensive books. Some of them are worth like millions of dollars, so there's no like guards, there's no lasers. All there is is a little old librarian lady who's protecting this one like expensive book. So the movie is them planning this heist, and then they actually go there and steal the book from the library. And it's based on a true story, which is just crazy. The main character is uh, the guy who played Quicksilver in the X-Men movies, and he does a great job. I didn't even recognize him until I, I looked at IMDB after the movie. And again, this is a true story, so they have the real guys who did the heist in the movie. They play themselves in the movie, telling the story, and then they also have actors playing the guys who did the heist, also. And so, they do it in a way that I've never seen in a you know, Hollywood movie before, where the, the four guys telling the story will have different versions of the story, and they kind of cut in and out and back and forth between, you know each of their stories and it's kind of up to the viewer to decide what really happened and they even sometimes they incorporate the real guys in like the actual scenes sometimes and uh, they just did an interesting way of cutting it and uh, I really thought it was brilliant I thought they did a great job of that and the reason I really like this movie is because it made you feel like you're there you know in the scene where they do the heist they have to attack the librarian lady and I swear like my heart was pumping extra hard like it, I wasn't just sitting watching a movie like I felt like I was there and it just felt like real life and um, when I was in middle school me and a friend were arrested because we made counterfeit money and we eventually got caught this is a true story I, I was 13 years old I made counterfeit money and um, when we were caught, my heart was just pumping, pumping, pumping really hard. And that's how I felt watching this movie. And isn't that like the whole point of going to the movies 
to make you experience something other than your everyday life, to make you feel something different. Instead of just sitting at the theater and just looking at the screen, you actually like feel something. And I think that's why I liked all three of these movies because it you know, gives you that experience. And I also really liked American Animals because I didn't know what was going to happen. There's a scene where they go to the library to steal the books and the heist just falls apart. And they leave and they're all really relieved. They're all really happy it failed because they know they're not going to get in trouble. They know that, you know, they're free now. The heist didn't work, but they're free. They're just driving away and they're free. And I thought that was the end of the movie. I thought it was just going to end there. And then, you know, the Quicksilver guy convinces them all to actually go back the next day and do the heist again. But I just seriously thought that was the end of the movie. Like, there's twists throughout it. And then they steal the book, and I kind of thought that was the end of the movie, but they actually end up getting caught. Um, so it was like another twist. And the reason that they got caught is because they went around and tried to sell the books. And at one of the places they tried to sell the books, they wrote down their real phone number, and after they left that art dealer place, they all knew that they were going to get arrested. Like, they all knew it was just a matter of time until the, the police found the number and caught them. So, there's several minutes in the movie where it's just, you know, shots of them just really nervous and knowing that their life is about to change, their life is about to come to an end. And, again, this is how I felt, sort of, when I was caught uh, with the counterfeit money. Like, just feeling like, okay, I screwed up. It's, uh, it's over now. Um, I'm going to get in trouble. And, you know, they got caught. They were sent to prison for a long time. They just did a great job of portraying it. And I recommend it. And the final movie is Tully. I saw this a couple months ago. And it's about a woman, I think, in her 30s. With two kids. And she's just really stressed out. That's the whole movie. Is just how stressful it is to have kids and I don't have any kids I don't want any kids this move this movie made me want kids even less um, you know I have a sister with kids I have some friends who have kids and I just know from being around them how stressful having kids can be and it's portrayed perfectly in this movie um, it was a great trailer I did a John Eats Carrots episode just listening to the song in the trailer. So Charlize Theron is really stressed out and she decides to get a night nanny who comes to the house and uh, just takes care of everything. She makes life great again. And she cleans up the house and does everything great. And um, it's portrayed by Mackenzie something. It's the actress. She's also great in... Um, Black Mirror and Halt or Catching Fire and there's a big twist at the end of the movie where it turns out that Tully the Night Nanny is actually just inside of Charlize Theron's mind it's kind of like Fight Club where it's just the other character is in their mind and um, again I did not see that coming it was like a twist ending and <laughs> I kind of feel like rewatching the movie now because I'm going <coughs> to rewatch it from this perspective of knowing that that other character was not there. Yeah, you know, I saw it a couple months ago, but I, I still think about it from time to time. That's kind of a sign of a good movie. And so it's, it's less fresh in my mind, so I have less of a memory of it. But the whole movie is just about being stressed out and how difficult it is to be a parent. And watching this movie really makes you appreciate what your parents have been through to raise you and um, I really recommend it I recommend all three of these you know I, some of the other 120 movies I watched are really forgettable like you just as soon as you leave the theater you just forget about it you know the movie Skyscraper I'm never going to think about that movie I'm never gonna you know I didn't really experience anything it's just an action movie the Equalizer 2 was very forgettable. Tag was very forgettable. Show Dogs was crap. Life of the Party was crap. There's was a lot of bad movies, but these three I really recommend. So um, that's it. Check them out, 
and thanks for watching.